Hey guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Boost! Going to take out the trash. Peekaboo, I see you because... I'm YouTube famous now. Available Christmas 2029 and a half BC. The album, Dad. Shimmy, shimmy. <laughs> that was a little bit of a, sh a slow shimmy, wasn't it? Shimmy, shimmy. <clears throat> AF. <laughs> Did I already say AF? AF. <clears throat> I'm dreaming of a drama filled Christmas. Boost! How are you guys doing today? Listen, Linda, listen. So, I was sitting outside. I had the camera all set up. It's a beautiful day in Indiana. A little hot. A little hot. I'm, you know, I'm ready for the Christmas. But we are closer to Christmas than we are to the beginning of summer. Okay? That is that is crazy town. So, anyway, I was sitting outside. And um, I have a camera all set up. And I started my intro. And I have my fan. And I have my lip gloss. Because, listen, Linda, I got lots to say today. And then, do you hear this outside? They started mowing my lawn. I thought they had already mowed my lawn, but apparently they're mowing it again. I don't know. But anyway, it's too loud out there right now. So, uh, I had to come inside into the bedroom. <laughs> Welcome to the bedroom with Peter. No. Someone's in the kitchen with Peter. What's he cooking up on his review channel today? I have no idea. Anyway, here we go. So, I'm a little tired today because... I told myself I was going to go to bed a little bit earlier last night, and by early, I meant like 3 o'clock. Um, I ended up staying up till past 7 o'clock in the morning because I was trying to finish the second season of The Real Housewives of Miami so that I would just have the reunion to watch and then get into season 3. So, um, I'm currently watching it with my book club partner, Amel. We're watching like all the housewives that we haven't watched before together. And um, I'm trying to get through these different Housewives franchises that I haven't watched, like New Jersey, like uh, like Miami, and like Potomac, uh, before the new seasons come out. And I'm like living for it. It's so funny because my husband watched this like 10 years ago. And so I'll be like, and what do you think about Leah Black? And he was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. He's like, I watched it like 10 years ago. I'm like... <laughs> But I wanted somebody to talk to, so then I have my friend Mel. So anyway, and today is Mel's birthday. Happy birthday, Mel! Happy birthday to you, cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you, cha cha cha. Happy birthday to the best true crime book club partner in the entire world, and my good Judy. Happy birthday to you, cha cha cha. And many more. All right, so today we're going to talk about Shane Dawson. Now, I have to tell you, okay, tomorrow I have a very uh, thought, thoughtful, put-together video. And um, I'm actually going to be sharing a lot of tea that I've never talked about um, over here before. Some stories about Shane Dawson that I haven't talked about. Some things about Jeffree Star that I haven't talked about. I just think it's time. I think it's kind of time to just clear out those old cobwebs and get those things out. So that video will be coming tomorrow. Um, I'm still putting it together and things like that. It looks like it's going to be a very long video. So strap yourself in and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this video today is a little bit more of a light-hearted or a light-farted <laughs> video um, about something that I found about Shane Dawson. And it's interesting because in my, you know... And looking at Jeffree Star, like, nothing that Jeffree Star does really surprises me. I think what surprises me more, like, you know, like I said that um, he was dropping all his drama, and I kind of insinuated that it was because he had a launch. But, like, in the back of my mind, I was like, like, this is where Jeffree Star kind of, like, catches you because you think that he's smarter than he is. I I'm really starting to second guess that. I'm really starting to think that maybe he's really not that smart, you know? That maybe he just got very lucky at makeup, and... He already had some kind of following, you know, with his music and things like that. I mean, I think there's a lot of people that YouTube push. There's a lot of people that get lucky on YouTube. It doesn't necessarily mean they're a genius. And then they sell a, a ton of products. I do know that people really like his makeup products. So I think that that really helped and things like that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he's the, mo the biggest genius in the entire world. I think that I started covering beauty influencer drama September 1st of 2016. Jeffree Star and Kat Von D were literally the first thing that I ever covered on this channel as far as drama. And um, it's interesting to me that over seven years later, he's still doing the same thing. I mean, Jeffree Star was kind of the person that invented drama to sell products, that he would talk about all this kind of stuff. And I think that at this point, 
Like, he doesn't really have anything to talk about because there's not really any exciting drama in his life. I mean, he's already dated every rapper, every NBA player, every NFL player. I mean, he can't really pull that story again because nobody's going to believe it. Nobody cares. I mean, if you, if you go through and you look at all the, the dating scandals that he's put out there, he's put them out there himself, too, right? Like, that's the other thing. Like, Jeffree Star is not walking down the street trying to be, you know, quiet about his dating life. He always says that these people don't want, want to be known who they are, but he's, like, the first person to talk about it, right? So, like, Jeffree Star is the first person to say, like, oh, well, I'm, you know, NFL players and rappers. All, I mean, they don't want to, they don't, they're on the down low, supposedly. Okay, but, and they don't want anybody to know, but then you're telling the entire world. You're the first person to tell everybody that you're dating these people. You're the first person... To put out a picture acting like you're dating somebody. Actually coming for that other people's wives over the story. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember this, but when he was doing this podcast, I can't even remember the football player's name, but I went to the Super Bowl and all that kind of stuff. Remember that? And he was stirring this whole thing up like he was dating this person. When in actuality, he was not dating the person. The whole thing was about marketing for him to be on this podcast. Do you remember that? This is how Jeffree Star works. He puts out all this scandal and drama. He puts it out himself, right? And then it's all a selling point for a podcast or makeup. His book is supposedly coming out next year. Girl, what, what kind of tea is he going to drop before that comes out? Who knows, right? The thing is, is that if you remember that story... People were speculating that it was a certain football player that was married, okay? And so the wife said something to him or dipped into his DMs and was like, please, you know, like, can you just stop with this or whatever? And he, like, came for her on Twitter, okay? So you had contrived drama, all right? Contrived fake drama that you were concocting to be a selling point for a podcast. There was absolutely 100% no truth in that relationship. Y'all weren't dating. It was fake, 100%. You were putting out pictures of hugging him in your bathroom. People were guessing who it was, and people guessed the wrong person. And so this woman is going through all this, where people are like, your husband's cheating on you with Jeffree Star. She dips into your DMs, and you come for her on Twitter over contrived fucking drama. That's who Jeffree Star is. So when people want to tell me that Jeffree Star has changed, that was literally the beginning of this year, okay? That was the beginning of 2023. So, you know, cry me a fucking river that Jeffree Star has changed. Jeffree Star would literally sell out anybody, okay, to make a dollar for his makeup or make a dollar off this or a podcast or whatever, right? We just saw this happen with uh, the, the Bunny XO, whatever, um podcast. I mean, he was throwing up clips, throwing up clips, bringing attention to it, talking about tea, all this kind of stuff, right? For the podcast. And then the podcast was really marketing for of him talking about James and him talking about Trisha and all this kind of stuff was really marketing for his palette launch. Well, I'm sitting there and I'm watching this. I'm like, this can't really be what it about, it's about. I mean, seven years later, Jeffree Star is still coming out with Oh, this is not, this is not them mowing my lawn. This is the blower that blows all the leaves all over my chairs and things like that. I've asked them not to come up there and they still do it. So now I'm going to have to go out, clean off my chairs, clean off my tables and things like that. They take the, the blower and they just blow it all over my front porch. And I know that they work very hard, but it pisses me off. Because then I have to go out there and clean it all up because they really do nothing but, but blow the leaves around. That's where I get 900 comments that people are like, uh, Peter, or like, blah, 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 whatever, okay? They're very nice guys. I've asked them numerous times. I actually, they were in, I was in a video, and I went like this. I've asked them numerous times not to come up and do my front porch, and they still do it anyway. Not to mention, I had Boo Radley out in the yard one time, in the backyard, and the guy, this guy right here, took the wind blower and blew it in Boo Radley's face, and he was scared to death, and he ran away, and I looked at him, I said, don't you ever do that again. So... That was not the nicest moment. But anyway, I moved inside to make this game video, and now it's just as loud in here as it is out, out, out there. But anyway, so I'm sitting there, and I'm watching all this stuff go on, and people are like, oh, Peter, you were right. Like, he launched his palette, and it was all about drama. And I'm still like, is that really what it's about? Is Jeffree Star so weak that he, he comes off of YouTube because he says there's no views on YouTube anymore, right? But then he goes over to TikTok, and then he's got to be buying himself. I mean, I've heard so many people say that he's buying himself tips to stay at the top from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. So basically, he's spending five and ten thousand dollars to stay at the top, which is completely pathetic. Okay, that you're tipping yourself to stay at the top. I mean, what kind of fantasy world at Hogwarts are you? Are, like, I mean, it, it, this is not a magic wand. They're not at Hogwarts. Okay, I mean, like, and people are like, oh, that's his team. No, that's Jeffree Star on a different device. Sending himself tips from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. 
Which, in all honesty, like, I, I don't even know... Well, I won't even get into the, the ethics of all that. But I think it's it's not fair to the other people that are TikTokers. It's not like they're sending themselves. People are like, well, he can do what he wants. Okay, but you're almost 40 years old, and you couldn't make it on YouTube anymore, you said. So you came over to TikTok, and then you wanted to be at the top. So you're doing all these things with TikTokers that are, like, between the ages of, like, 18 and 22, okay? And you're battling them, which I don't even understand all that battling stuff. And then you do okay for a while because people are like, oh, it's Jeffree Star. Most of the people you were battling didn't even know who you were. And then, all of a sudden, you don't do so well anymore and other people are beating you. So, you had to start tipping yourself. I mean, girl, it's a pathetic look. It's really a pathetic look. So, anyway. Apparently, Jeffree Star is still up to his same old games, okay? Well, what I started seeing over time was that... Uh, Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson are so desperate for views and money. I have a feeling, like, people are asking me about predictions and things like that, because I always do these prediction videos, you know. I think in 2024, we're going to start seeing either the selling or the closing of a lot of brands, makeup-wise, okay? I'm not going to speculate who those are. I think Jeffree Star's got enough resources that he's probably not going to close anytime soon. But do I think that he's, he's ordering smaller amounts of units? Absolutely. Do I think some of these smaller brands that aren't really doing that well are going to close? Yes. Do I think that Jaclyn Hill or Jaclyn Cosmetics is going to close before the end of the year? 100%. I'm already getting sent so many DMs and I'm waiting to make that video about insider knowledge from sources. I always wanted to be a source. Like, when I was a kid, I either wanted to be a soap opera writer or a source for People Magazine. No, true story, I did. But anyway, speaking of dream jobs, I, this is a very sad moment of the video. Um, I've made a really difficult decision. And, um, you know, I've been doing drama commentary for seven years over here. S seven years and a month over here. Just past a month. And I, I feel like it's time for me to branch out and do some different things. Um, I've always loved music. And I... Uh, no, I'm not starting a cover channel. <laughs> I'm not starting an eighth channel, a cover channel where I sing, Rock on Gold. I mean, but, you know, listen. The sun will come out. You know, that channel would fucking take off. We know it would, okay? I mean, I may not be able to sing a lick, okay? But we know that that channel will be taken off, and you guys will be asking for the iTunes codes and all that kind of stuff. And trust me, I would disclose them. Okay, but, no, in all honesty... I thought to myself, like, Peter, what do you want the next stage of your life to be about? You're 51 years old, you know, you can't be covering Jeffree Star until you're 75, or can you? <laughs> Probably. But anyway, um, so you need to start figuring out what you want to do with the next part of your life. I've always loved music, okay? It's not like tomorrow I'm going to become the musician of the world. I think we know that, right? And so I, I've really been thinking hard and long about this. And I think that the direction I need to go in is I need to manage a, mu a, a, a music group, musical group. I don't even know the word yet. But it's so exciting to learn about the industry. Oh my god, I'm meeting so many industry people in the music industry and things like that. And I mean, so many people are reaching out to me. I put together an amazing group, okay? I put together an all-girls group, and they are amazing. I mean, I have had so many celebrities reach out to me so far. I've had Reba McIntyre reach out to me, okay? I've had um, uh, Car uh, Carrie Underwood reach out to me. Oh, my God. All the country musician stars are reaching out to me. Dolly. Dolly has reached out to me because she wants to co-manage this group. And so many people are so excited about this group, okay? Dolly's like, if they want the rights to I Will Always Love You, let them do it. Because when I hear them saying in, in, in you know, <laughs> different area codes, she's like, listen. She's like, I have never heard anybody sing. Y'all are like, this is completely a joke. No, it's not. Like, this is completely serious. Yes, Reba McIntyre, Carrie Underwood, and Dolly Parton have all reached out to me, okay? Because I have the next all-girl group um, country crossover band, and I would like to introduce them to you now. So, okay. This is the lady, okay? And she is the lead singer of the group, okay? Thank Destiny's Child and Beyonce. This is the lady, okay? And then there's little lady number one, and there's little lady number two, okay? And they make up three times the lady. <laughs> Isn't that such a cute name? Three times the lady, going once, going twice, and they are so excited, and I am managing them now, okay? So, and instead of, oh, oh, 
they're what they're saying already oh my god okay instead of calling me peter mon the drama commentary channel of the world okay east of the mississippi um and uh west of the ohio is that even true i don't even know <laughs> okay but instead of calling me a drama investigator i've never said i was a, an investigator i've never said i was a journalist people always want to be like as a journalist fuck you with that journalist bullshit i have never once claimed to be a journalist on this channel okay i claim to be a drama commentary gossip tea channel okay talking shit about people and sometimes a candle review company but get fucked with that journalist bullshit but from now on you can forget all them titles okay because i am now the manager of three times the lady and let's not get it fucked up and confused okay I'm, we're gonna be on the dolly christmas special so just get prepared but anyway so today I wanted to talk a little bit about Shane Dawson now that I've talked about three times a lady and, and people will be like timestamping this video and they'll be like, uh, the video actually starts at, where are we 16, I can't see, 16 minutes and 35 seconds or something like that? Get fucked. I don't really care. <laughs> Although one of my favorite viewers is the Peter Vaughn timestamp channel. Okay. Which their job is very difficult because they all, they, they know that my video started 0.00, .00 so they don't even have to watch the video, they just go in and, and the war between the different timestamp channels on this is like, people are always like, where did you come up with this? And I'm like, like, I don't even know, like when I add something to my intro or whatever, like I had nothing to do with this timestamp thing, right? Like one of them was out there and I thought it was so fun because I would say like people timestamp my videos, right? But they did it like real seriously. And so somebody started like the Peter Mon uh, timestamp channel. And I thought it was hilarious, right? So I said something about it in a video. And then like two days after that, there was like the official Peter Mon timestamp channel. And then there was the unofficial timestamp channel. And then I said something about it and I go, I mean, sooner or later, you guys, like Sally Jones and Judy Smith are gonna have their own timestamp channels. And I mean, two days after that, it was like the Sally Jones timestamp channel, the Judy Smith timestamp channel. We're showing up, it's probably all the same person. And whoever you are, I fucking live for your hilarity, okay? It is so, is hilarity even a word? I don't know. But it just cracks me up so much when I see that on there. That's the kind of lighthearted shit that I need. All right. So let's talk about this Shane Dawson stuff because tomorrow it's going to get kind of dark and heavy. And there's some things I need to talk about. But today I want to talk about this vlog that Rylan and Shane put out on Rylan's channel. And the video is called, hold on a second. I want to see how many views it's sitting at in real time. We need to address something and it's 306,000 views. Okay. Now this was released a day ago. Hold on a second. This is the thumbnail to it. Okay. It's some very serious for standing like in the kitchen somewhere or something like that. Someone's in the kitchen with Shane and Rylan's like this. And it's like this very serious moment, right? Okay. So if we go back and look at their videos, from a day ago, we need to address something. 306,000 views. Facing Shane's biggest fear, 520,000 views. That's from two weeks ago. So that's kind of maxed out on views, right? And then Big Baby Update a month ago, 606,000 views. We did something bad, 529,000 views. We're expecting our first daddy photo shoot, 722,000 views. Um, and then this was two months ago. We're pregnant, seeing our twins for the first time, 869,000 views. And that's like the best that Rylan has done. His views go between, let's say, 550,000 views to what was this, 870,000 views, right? That's where they range. And they usually range between about five and 600,000. So not bad, not bad views, right? But every one of these titles is, I mean, the baby stuff is real, obviously. That's where they're doing that. But every one of these titles is so clickbaity. And so just to get into this, be before I get into what this vlog was about, I was like, did Shane ever put out that video that was the craziest video in the entire world that he was going to put out? Like, I couldn't remember. And I was like, if, if Shane Dawson put out, do you remember that I talked about that? That Shane Dawson was going to put out the craziest video that had ever happened, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And um, I was going to look for my receipt, but I, I know it's in there somewhere. Trust me. Okay. But he's like, I'm getting ready to, to film the craziest video I've ever filmed or whatever. Right. Or I'm preparing the craziest video, which is what he says about every video. Right. So I'm like, did Shane put that video out? And it obviously wasn't crazy. And so, cause he, he, the way that he markets everything is that everything has to be hyped up and extreme and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, did Shane put out this crazy, crazy ass video? And I don't remember it because it wasn't crazy ass. And that's how he markets everything. So I went over to the Shane channel. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, when you go over to Shane Dawson's channel, I mean, you guys, this is just at this point. It's like so fucking ridiculous. It's beyond. Okay. So I go over to Shane. I go over to Shane's channel and Shane's channel. I go to look at the, uh, the videos. The first video from two months ago is The Nightmare of Shane Dawson. This is about the cakes. Okay? I look. I, I go over here and I look and I'm like, I know you can't see it, but I go over there and I look and I'm like, 
he has changed the thumbnail again. Like, we're now at about 20 times of him changing the thumbnails. I need to start doing things. Like, I need to start screenshotting people's banners. If you know, if you know, you know what I'm talking about with the banner. Because there's a lot of speculation that somebody changed their banner. And if, if, if I had proof that somebody changed their banner on their channel, I would, and, and around the time that I was talking about certain things, and they changed it to what it is now, oh man, I would let them have it. I would literally let them have it. But I don't have any proof of that. So it may have been up before. I don't know. But I need to start taking screenshots of these people's banners and their videos and the thumbnails because Shane Dawson, like, now that I'm looking through these, like, he has changed these thumbnails, like, crazy amounts of times, all of them. And the thing that's sad about this is that even the changing of the thumbnails and all this kind of stuff where people think it's a new video, this video is two months old. It's 1.5 million views. Okay? And it's got a scary face in it, and it says a nightmare of Shane Dawson. You would think that would be a video that people would want to come and watch, right? It also references all those, you know, the the beautiful life of Jeffree Star, the, all this, the Shane Dawson, all those kind of videos, right? Then he did mind-blowing conspiracy theories four months ago. That got 3.7 million views. Well, you're doing conspiracy videos on your other channel. So you're doing them on two channels now? Okay. Conspiracy theories with Shane Dawson 2023, five months ago, 3.1 million views. The end of Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson, 10 months ago, that was 3.6 million views. The New World of Jeffree Star, 10 months ago, these were the, uh, what do you call it, the series where he went to his, his ranch, his Jack Ranch. The Cancelled World of Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson, 11 months ago, 4.2 million views. The Universe is Broken. So, one year ago, he got 6.5 million views when he came back into the conspiracy video, video. Literally, the thumbnail is him, his face, looking to the side with a bunch of clouds behind him. It's literally... The least of all of them, okay? That's what he got the most on because people like his conspiracy videos. The thing is, I think he's kind of burnt out on doing conspiracy videos. And so he's trying to do these videos of like cakes and things like that. But the reality is, he's so scared of not getting the views and making the money that he has to make these outrageous videos that are like, oh my God, the nightmare of Shane Dawson. Well, I start going into his community tab, right? Because I'm like, I know that he's come out in the last two to three months and talked about this is the craziest video. I'm get ready for this video. I know that I, I've talked about that on here, right? So, I mean, I've got screenshots of it. So, I go, start going through here. And it's like, found my doppelganger. Then it's he and Ryland on golfing. Just a couple dads or something. Facing Shane's biggest fear. I mean, it's all, you guys, it's all just like these things about videos. Like, here's another clickbait one. This was hard to do, which had nothing to do with anything being hard to do. But he puts his screen. It's all clickbait, right? And I'm now I'm like at a month ago. I'm at two months ago. I don't see anything about this was the craziest video that I ever filmed. Okay? So I go over to a Shane 2 channel. It's the same thing. So what Shane Dawson is doing is he is coming up with these community tabs to hype people up for marketing. And he's like, oh my God, you guys, I'm getting ready to release the craziest video that I have ever released. I've never filmed anything like this before. And then he throws, to hype everybody up, right? And then he throws up the cake video. And then he throws up 20 different thumbnails because nobody's really that interested in Shane Dawson anymore. He can't be happy with 1.5 million views, right? Which literally, the video is a vlog following you around while you have these cakes delivered. And then you, um... Went to Ryland's parents' house, and Morgan was there, and you had a cake of hers made. You guys, listen. It's not like this is genius editing, okay? There are people that do this every single day. No, I don't claim to be the editor of the world, and I don't edit a lot, okay? But if Shane Dawson is so much so worried about the marketing of this, film more videos, girl, for your 1.5 million viewers that you have out there. Film more videos, post more often. You don't have, you act like everything has to be this like giant jump cut and whatever, you know. And you're and like and the podcast to me anymore and the the videos with Chris, I cannot even watch because I, I'm not even a jealous person. But the way that he talks, to, I mean, there was like a video where he was like feeding Chris something, and he was like, you guys, it's so cringe the way that he is with Chris. I mean, and I know that they've been friends for a long time. I don't treat my friends that way. I don't, my friends and I, we don't interact in sexual ways, in innuendos. It's, it's very bizarre. It makes me feel bad for Rylan when I'm watching it. I'm like, you're literally sitting there and, and like, you're okay with this. I mean, and, and you know, he's had all these, uh, he's had all these allegations of inappropriate behavior. God forbid you fall out with Chris like you did with Andrew because there's literally video footage of sexual harassment. I mean, literal, okay? 
So you better hope that you and Chris don't ever have a falling out like you and your uh, associate or assistant that you called Andrew that was literally editing all your videos because we can tell that your video editing has gone to shit since you lost Andrew, the nicest guy in the entire world, okay? Your video editing has gone to shit. So it was really Andrew that was doing all the editing. It was really Andrew that's coming up with the ideas, right? Isn't that true? Okay, so your ideas have gone to shit. Your editing has gone to shit. So let's let's hope to God with all your sexual innuendos because you want to fuck Chris so bad, it's so obvious. In my opinion, of a public figure, okay? Just like I was watching The Housewives, I'd say the same thing. And trust me, I did just the other day about Kim Zolciak and Croy Beerman, okay? Who are going through a divorce. I said some very similar things. And I cannot be the only one that watches it and thinks that because other people have commented it to me before that I don't even know them people, okay? They just comment on my videos. It's bizarre. But needless to say, Shane, you've gone through one cancellation, how these people say things. There's already people on the sidelines that are watching your videos that are like, this whole behavior between he and Chris is number one, inappropriate, and the fact that he's married, and number two, it's cringe to watch, and it's very inappropriate. If you and Chris would ever go your separate ways... Okay, I don't care how many fucking NDAs are signed. I don't care about all that kind of shit. If you guys go your separate ways, and, and Chris really feels uncomfortable with that situation, there's literal video, video footage out there, okay? That people have saved those videos. I mean, it's just... This is where Shane Dawson hasn't learned anything, right? Okay, so I go over to his Shane 2 videos, or channel, and I'm looking through the, the community tab. There's nothing over there either. So he markets the shit, and then he deletes the community... Tell me this is an honest, nice guy, okay? You guys are like, well, this is just a YouTuber doing business. I've never done this kind of shit. I don't know anybody. I mean, I followed a lot of YouTubers, and I don't see this kind of shit go on, okay? It's so calculated and contrived, which is what I talk about in my video tomorrow with proof, okay? A, a personal story. So, but, um, you know, Shane Dawson, it's like he goes through all this kind of stuff, to boost the views when you're not even getting views. Because at 1.5 million, probably half of those are people that came back and watched the video thinking it was a different video. So you're really getting 750,000 views. You're getting the same amount of views that your husband is getting on his vlog channel. Because nobody's interested in you anymore. And the other thing is, is that you have hyped it up. You have saturated, okay, the marketing with coming out and being like, this is the craziest video. This is the craziest video. This is the craziest video, okay? Even your fans at this point that will support you at nauseam are kind of like, we're so fucking tired of this because every video is the craziest video and then it's a cake video. If you just came out, okay, and were honest about what the video was, more people would probably watch that. You know, when you were t titling your videos back in the day, cake this or cake that or putting together pancakes with ta Taco Bell, people were watching your videos, okay? You don't have to market the hell or change thumbnails on your conspiracy videos because they sell themselves because people are interested in that. But you want to do what you want to do, but then you want to come out because they, the people don't like your ideas because you're fake and you're phony and you, you have ran out of ideas. That's why he's constantly like, do you guys think I should put a horror movie out? When's your horror movie coming out? It's October 2nd today, okay? <clears throat> so if that video is coming out, don't you think you put that out in Halloween? Don't rush him. Don't rush me. I've made that mistake before. Beast, a little Taylor name for you. Okay, we won't rush you. When will you put that? When will you put that horror movie out at Christmas time? Or was that another brain fart idea like Jacqueline Hill that you just say? And ja and not to mention that Shane Dawson literally has his fingers in the pot of everything that's going on, okay, that's wrong in Hollywood. That's the truth with YouTube, okay? Every little situation. Josh David Evans is talking about him with Colleen Ballinger. Trisha Paytas is talking about him. He's friends with Jeffree Star. The James Charles Tati Westbrook situation. I mean, Shane Dawson is literally the common denominator with all of it. And if it's not him, it's his good GD Jeffree Star, okay? So, they come out and they do this Ryland's Vlogs video, okay? Which I was stupid enough to watch because I thought, well, let's see what <coughs> what this is about. In all honesty, I thought, well, maybe they'll have something interesting to say. And, oh, what is this? Did they changed the No, they didn't change it. Okay, I thought, well, maybe this is something really serious that they're going to address. So maybe that I sh maybe I should watch it. You know what I'm saying? So the video, like I said, is called "We Need to D Address Something," and. I'm not going to say I've never done a clickbait video, okay? I don't do them nearly as, enough as, uh, uh, as much as these two do. These two, literally, their entire brand is clickbaiting titles and thumbnails. And what it says to me is, they don't really think... I mean, literally, I'll talk about Toddy Westbrook's lawsuit, and I'll call it like Toddy... I mean, I didn't yesterday, but like I would, you know? Uh, not be afraid of that. But literally, 
you know, like their dog will poop on the carpet and they'll be like, the biggest disaster that we've ever had in our lives, right? With shocked faces. And everybody goes over there and it's like two seconds and they're like talking about how their dog pooped on the carpet. Whose dog hasn't pooped on their carpet, right? And this is what, this is going to stop. Hold on a second. This is where people are getting really tired of this, right? Because they're like, even the fans are like, this is too much. Like, just call it what it is. Why do you have to be fake about this, right? And I know people are going to be like, Peter, you literally, like, you want to make fun of Shane Dawson and say he has no ideas, okay? But then you want to make your whole channel dedicated to talking about these people. Yep, that's right. I'm a drama commentary channel. I was actually one of the first drama commentary channels, so I kind of invented this. Uh, well, I didn't invent it, okay? I'm not going to be Ramona Singer and say that I came up with this. When I came out, uh, Sanders Kennedy, not, uh, uh, Sanders Kennedy and Karina Kaboom were the, the two out there, and they were doing beauty influencer drama, and then I started and did all that kind of stuff. So I was, I was one of the first people doing drama commentary. I didn't invent it. Maybe I like to think that because I don't got a whole lot going on in my life. But listen, I can admit that all day long, okay? My life is boring turd all day long. But anyway, not as boring turds as many of these people's lives and stuff like that. So, um, then he goes in and he talks about, in this video, well, first of all, the video is basically them pulling out their Halloween decorations, okay? And then he goes in and talks about Colleen Hoover and how he thinks that Colleen Hoover is a good friend of his. Now, I think the reason he brought this up is because when you pull up Colleen on Shane's channel, okay, it pulls up Colleen Hoover. And so I think that he, I think he slipped that in there because he doesn't want people to confuse Colleen Hoover with Colleen Ballinger as if, Verity, okay? I don't love her books, but most of my girlfriends do. She's extremely problematic with what she writes, okay? But anyway... So, but people love her. My friend Tiny Jean's like, she grew up, a, she grew up in a trailer. She's the American dream. Blah, blah, blah. My friend Tiny loves all of her books. But anyway, I guess I should check this before I go in here. I know he don't follow James Charles. Shane Dawson. Hold on a second. Here he is. What's, what's on his, oh my lord, a makeup look. People are speculating he's coming out with new makeup. Okay. Um, I know these are Halloween costume kind of things that he's doing. Oh, for the podcast. Okay. But, um, when you put in, uh, oh, he still follows why are you still following me? I unfollowed you a long time ago. Okay. So, um, oh, he, Shane Dawson does follow Colleen Ballinger. Girl! Well, okay. Then this is interesting to me. So, he mentions in there that he follows Colleen, ba or Colleen Hoover, okay? Colleen Hoover. The, the writer, okay? Of, like, romance novels. I had mentioned this in a video before. I think I had talked about the fact that he had followed her. So, Colleen Ballinger. So, you're still following Colleen Ballinger? Now, Joey Graceppa, her best friend, unfollowed him. Her and Daniel Prada and Manny MUA and all them predator protectors. They unfollowed Colleen Ballinger, but you're still following Colleen Ballinger? Girl. You and Jacqueline Hill might be the two people that are still following Colleen Ballinger. Shane Dawson, you, with all of your allegations, should have been the first person to unfollow Colleen Ballinger, Okay. Oh, Shane Dawson, you are literally a predator protector because you have been friends with Colleen Ballinger for years, okay? And done videos with Colleen Ballinger, been at her parties and things like, girl, listen, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Oh, this just totally upset for me with Shane Dawson. You are so problematic, okay? And you know that you follow her because you just talked in here about how you follow Colleen, Colleen Hoover, okay? And how you, like... She dipped into your DMs one time, or you dipped into her DMs and she responded or something. But they're talking about how she's going on book tour, so she's putting up her Christmas uh, decorations and all this kind of stuff. They're talking about that. Then they're standing in the kitchen, okay? And as they're standing in the kitchen, they have these very serious looks on their face. And this is about, the video is like 35 minutes. This is about the 20-minute mark. And Shane goes, wait a second. This would be a really good thumbnail. This is how he thinks, right? He's like, this would be a really good thumbnail for us that we could do, like, call it something like, we need to address something. And they both stop, and then it, like, shows the thumbnail on the screen. Girl, I am so bored. I am so bored of you, Shane Dawson, okay? You have literally, you are fake, you are phony, you are problematic following predators, okay? You have been accused of, of very similar things, so I think the last person you need to be following is Colleen Ballinger, okay? I already checked. I know he don't follow James Charles because they have this huge falling out. If, if, he, if I go in here and he follows James Charles, I will be so confused. What the fuck? You follow James Charles, too? Shane Dawson follows James... Okay, James Charles and Shane Dawson had one of the biggest falling outs ever. 
Girl, do you just not ever clean up your Instagram or what is going on? I am so confused, okay? I mean, he still follows me, so I'm very confused about this. Shane Dawson might have... Girl, I'm like looking through... You might have one of the, the most... Well, we already know he follows JoJo Seawall, right? <laughs> yep, there she is. Um, oh, you know what you should look up? Corey DeSoto, because that would be really weird. No. He don't follow Corey DeSoto. Um, anyway. Girl. You want to bitch and moan so much about being canceled, and then you literally follow Colleen Ballinger and James Charles. Like, you are, like, that's the worst of the worst, okay? That is the worst of the worst. Mm -mm. So anyway, uh, I'm just like, I'm so completely just blown away by that. I'm like, are you serious? Like, this is... I thought you were trying to clean up your act and learn from your mistakes, Shane. Like, part of that would be... You know, when I... When, okay, just for example. When I started realizing that I didn't need to follow these people to report on them. That people send it to me anyway or I can go look up their stuff. I don't have to support them by a follow. I literally went in and even people that weren't problematic, I unfollowed everybody that I talk about. Okay? All of them. They pop up every once in a while on Twitter because I follow so many people that I can't go through Twitter. And just, I, but I did. I, I think I followed three or four hundred people. And so I went through and I tried to like unfollow everybody that I think is problematic. But when it pops up, I unfollow them immediately. Right? Okay. So I literally follow like Friends of mine, people that I've interacted with behind the scenes, and senior dog rescues, favorite dogs that I have that are rescue dogs, and illustrators of little houses that are under the ground where animals live, okay? Now, I'm a drama commentary channel. I'm not on the level of Shane Dawson, and you have this huge cancellation. You would think that one of the things your PR people would tell you that you don't have because you don't think it's important to have PR people even after a major cancellation, they would tell you is to clean up your social media and maybe watch before you tweet something out, right? Like, it has to go through them before you put something out. Okay, you didn't do that. You didn't hire those people, all right? So now you're following two of the most problematic people, okay, on YouTube, and you've been canceled for similar things, not as bad, okay, but people still th say those things about you, and you think this is okay, like, I would have unfollowed those people with quickness, and you don't even have to give an explanation. I think people would just understand I cannot follow them because of what the cancellation that I went through, you know? And in all honesty, I know people are like, well, Shane Dawson should come out and talk about it. If I were Shane Dawson and I was Shane Dawson's PR person, I would say, listen, you need to show growth and change. And I probably wouldn't talk about Colleen Ballinger, okay? Unless you got something to say, and evidence to prove against her. I wouldn't come out and talk about it. But even then, it's probably going to make you look bad. So from that point of view... But he hasn't shown he's changed because he's still doing all his inappropriate stuff, constant sexual jokes. Their newest podcast was testing their sperm. It's like, you guys are like 14-year-old kids. We're like, oh my God, what can we do today? What prank can we play on mom? Oh my God. Oh my God. Did you see Sally Joe drove? Did you see uh, Sally Joe? Like, uh, she moved in across the street. Oh my God, my pants are getting hard. You guys are like 14, 12-year-old fucking boys, okay? It's weird. It's fucking weird. And the, the weirdness is that you don't even see it. And you're literally the one that is sitting down editing your videos. Okay? You're literally editing your videos and editing your podcasts. And the shit that you're putting out there in the world you think is okay. Which tells us you haven't changed. Okay? So all those therapy sessions you go into. I don't know what you're talking about. How bitter you are at the fucking world. How they canceled you. Okay, well, why don't you take a look at why you were canceled so that it doesn't repeat itself again and change those behaviors? I am so thrown out that he follows Colleen Ballinger and James Charles. You have literally, you fucking came for James Charles. You were the one that talked to Toddy Westbrook and make, told her to make that video, okay? You have no love in your heart for James Charles. What the fuck is your need to follow James Charles, okay? Seriously? Girl, I am so, like... Listen, I'll say this right now, okay? People always say, well, you drama commentary channels. You know, you just get your views and, and make your videos off of talking about other people. And listen, I never claim to do otherwise, okay? I never act like I was coming out and talking about the most scary-ass bullshit in my entire life, okay? You know, I always talk about something serious in my videos, all right? So listen, I maybe do a clickbait title, maybe add a, a month. You know, I film between five and seven videos a day. 
okay? And no, I don't edit them except for cutting the fronts and the backs of them off, okay? But these people can hire editors and send their videos off. They're putting videos out like every two months. I'm video filming between five and seven videos a day, okay? So even if that was just five a day or four a day, let's say over uh, seven days, I'm filming, what is that, 28 to 35 videos a week, okay? So I think it's fair for me to use a clickbait title every fucking once in a while. But when you're filming a video every two months and every video title that you have is a clickbait title, you have ran out of ideas, okay? You don't have any talent anymore and you've lost it. I don't ever claim to be something over here that I'm not, okay? Just like I've never claimed to be a journalist, I've never claimed to be anything but a shit-talking drama commentary fucking channel talking about tea and gossip on the internet, okay? I am fully aware Okay, that I get views and make money talking about other people. I'm a gossip channel. That's what gossip channels do. All right. If you have a problem, don't watch my fucking channel. I don't know what to tell you, but I've never claimed to be anything otherwise, you know, and I'm very happy with what I do. And I feel very blessed that I get to get up every single day, but I'm not trying to fake who I am on YouTube for views and clicks. Okay. What you see is what you get, you know. Fair is fair, as Billie Jean said. Anyway, I just heard my husband coming downstairs, so I got to uh, I got to get going. But let me know what you think about all that in the comment section below. The whole video of Ryland's vlogs was boring. It was Halloween decorations. I mean, this is the thing. If you said shopping for Halloween decorations, people would still watch it. That love Shane and, and Ryland. There's no reason to have to fake it with this clickbait title. People would love that. You know, I don't get as many views as them, but on my Peter Does stuff video, I do like huge. Halloween cozy haul yesterday. People still watch it. They like it. It was a huge Halloween cozy haul from Fresh Time. There's no shame in that, you know, or trying a Halloween pumpkin sugar cookies, you know, there's no shame in that. People like that about Ryland. They like that he's redecorating rooms and being homey and things like that. They would like him to show them going shopping at, you know, Spirit Halloween and things like that. There's no shame in that. You don't have to fake everything. It's so, the fake world of Shane Dawson. The fake world of Shane Dawson. Anyway, I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Wait for that video. It's going to be good. I love you and I'll see you then. Bye.